So Peach, obviously I've known you for a long time, but will you please tell our audience who you are? Well, I'm a, my name is Pitch Johnson. I'm a local boy. I grew up here in Palo Alto. I uh, went to high school and college here. I went to graduate school back east. I was in the military for a while and uh, didn't think about venture capital until I met Bill Draper, who lived next door to me, when my first job in a steel mill. And then he, he, he joined his father in a venture firm and asked me to join him in another firm later. So in 1962, I formed a venture capital firm with Bill Draper, and that's I've been doing this ever since. So would you say that your venture fund with Bill Draper was the first one in Silicon Valley? Well, it, yeah, no, it wasn't, but we were early. But his father's fund, called Draper Gathering, it was before us. But there weren't very many deals, and there, weren't very much, there wasn't very much money. So we had to go around looking for things to do. We'd go to lawyers and ask them, we'd go to accountants and ask them, and try to find deals. And uh, so we did some good deals. Uh, and we, I think we were partly lucky and partly we were skillful. So venture capital is pretty much the U.S. phenomenon. But now that Eastern Europe and other countries want to start investing in startups, uh, what would be your recommendation? Well, I would say they have been doing it for 10, 15 years. Well, you tried doing the fund. No, but I meant, I meant uh, uh, Western Europe has been doing it a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, for 10, 15 years, France, Germany, England, uh, Spain to a certain extent, Italy and even Greece. But as far as Eastern and Central and Eastern Europe, they've just gotten going the last 10 years. Poland a while back, Russia has had some false starts because the government was too involved. Uh, Ukraine, not really. Um, but Eastern Europe is getting going now. So you've had several decades of actively investing in, in companies. Would you say that some uh, mistakes investors make are avoidable, or they just happen, there is nothing you can do? The biggest mistake, there are two major mistakes people make. One is hearing about a product, thinking it's good, and not figuring out what the market is or how the market can be made for that product. So lack of market understanding, lack of market research. Sometimes you've got to create a market for your own product like Apple did. But basically, lack of market, lack of market thinking is the biggest hazard. And then you, you, you have to have people who really wanted to, wanted to succeed. You can't have people who sort of do this as a nine to five job. Starting a company is a really involved business. So if you cannot have, say, both, and you can choose either betting on a team or the technology. Uh, I know that some people say it's all about people. Some people say that technology is something that will take the company out. Well, some people, whenever you say it's all about that, you're probably wrong. It's a combination of really good people, really good technology, serving a really good market. But the market has to, the technology only makes sense if it serves a market or can be, a market can be made for it. And one uh, final question. What is your favorite investment in your life today? Well, it has to be Amgen. Yeah. It was, it was Tell people, uh, maybe they don't know what Amgen is. Well, Amgen is it called, uh, the real name of it to start with was Applied Molecular Genetics. And a very good friend of mine Bill, made, did, named Bill Bowes did three deals. Applied Molecular Genetics, Applied uh, Biosystems, and Applied Microcircuits. And they all succeeded, but he invited me to, luckily invited me to join him in those, and did. And uh, so I worked very hard while Bill was the primary guy. He and I, in the early days, really guided the company in major ways. But I was definitely number two, but they called me a founder, and I've always been complimented well, I by that. But anyway, I, we had, it was the most successful, but it was also the most fun in terms of knowing I was influencing what was happening, along with Bill. When they were a tiny startup, I remember briefly, did, uh, did they have something with L.A. Lilly? How do you protect you? With what? L.A. Lilly, I think. They, they had a deal with Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson. Yeah. Right. So how do you protect your investment well, all the uh, way? Johnson & Johnson 
it was a difficult partner then, although they turned out in the end in other deals to be a very strong company, but they changed management. But they were they were providing with capital and some marketing rights, and uh, I didn't like their behavior. Later on, I became a Johnson and Johnson fan because they they changed presidents and behaved much better. But Johnson and Johnson did play a role in financing and guiding us in the early days, along with uh, uh, a couple of other companies. Mm -hmm. So, Amgen was a startup, and the first check was for how many million? Well, the very, very beginning, it wasn't any millions at all. It was a, a couple hundred thousand bucks. And that was done in May. Bill got incorporated, and he asked me to join him. So, and I started working on it. And by October, I made an investment of sixty thousand dollars. And now the market cap is. Oh boy. Uh, I don't remember, but it's. But it definitely. Several tens of billions. Several yeah. tens. Probably, of billions. let's say, forty billion. I would say that was a good investment. It was a good investment. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. This is fun.